This is a very sensitive topic to cover. Before getting started, I want to make a few things quite clear. First, with regards to conspiracy content, I will be firmly labeling any speculation or theory as exactly that, speculation. YouTube has undergone radical changes over the past couple of years designed to make producing conspiratorial content a high-risk endeavor. Even discussing the topics from an analytical perspective can be risky for non-legacy media, so I'll be taking an extra precaution to ensure a balanced video on the topic. Second, the situation is evolving as we speak. What we are seeing now will not be indicative of the final results, not in terms of infection rates, mortality rates, initial source, or many other factors. I'll present everything I have been able to gather so far, as well as analyze the likely global economic fallout of this outbreak, but over time, these numbers and results will certainly evolve and change. Third, I will attempt to make this as comprehensive as possible, with clear-cut definitions, factual information, as well as reasonable speculation and a clearly labeled splash of what-if conspiracy in a non-damaging and non-harmful format. I myself am not an epidemiological expert or a medical professional of any kind, but I've been in close communication with a few contacts who are, so take that for what you will. Even with such a pedigree, however, due to the nature of the outbreak's origin, deep within China, we are seeing numbers and data points that are completely unreliable, so the ultimate takeaway is that NCOV, also known as novel coronavirus, is a giant question mark which is already making very large economic waves across the globe. To really begin, we need to define a few terms. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses ranging in severity from a common cold, which is almost universally harmless, to MERS, or Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, which can kill over one third of its patients. NCOV, or novel coronavirus, is a member of this family. A novel virus is defined as a virus not yet seen before, so novel coronavirus, NCOV, indicates a new strain of coronavirus never before seen to infect humans. This leads us to the first major point. What is it and where did it come from? I could spend hours discussing virology and the science behind what viruses are or how they work. That's not because I'm an expert, I'm not. That is because this is a massive section of scientific study with years upon years of schooling to effectively master it. More than can be crammed into a YouTube video, obviously. The gist of it is this, viruses are microscopic parasites that can have damaging effects within the human body but do not generally thrive outside the body. Over the course of history, viruses have been responsible for countless deaths and widespread disease, which bolstered their reputation as a dangerous phenomenon. This is true, but also keep in mind viruses are extremely prevalent, and many are mostly harmless. This brings us to NCOV and where it came from. Time for some speculatory conspiracy here. The truth is, right now, as of the making of this video, today, we don't know where it came from. Initial reports suggested that the virus originated in a seafood market in Wuhan, China. The city of Wuhan, which is now fully quarantined, is widely regarded as ground zero for the outbreak and commonly believed to be the origin site. The theory was based around market consumption of certain types of animals, such as bats or snakes, and that the coronavirus strain had somehow bridged the species gap through ingestion at the Wuhan seafood market in late December, or early December actually. However, this has now been called into question by a recent Lancet study. The theory is also heavily criticized by Republican Senator Tom Cotton. New speculation centers on the idea that the virus entered the Wuhan seafood market already carried by humans and the initial outbreak was manifested elsewhere. A catalyst for now rampant speculation, however, points to a much more sinister scenario. Wuhan, China is the home of not one, but two weapons-grade virology research laboratories, which were not only operational at the time, but at least one was actively researching existing coronavirus strains. This is where the speculation becomes purely theoretical. Articles and testimonial exist for both sides of this equation, with figures like Danny Shoham, a former Israeli military intelligence officer, suggesting his strong belief that the virus could have originated in one of the Wuhan virus labs, which have been theorized as active within the Chinese covert biological weapons program. 
Supporting this are events such as allegations of improper shipment procedures containing high-grade virus samples from Canada to Beijing. The list of threads to pull on is very, very long, but suffice it to say there is ample material from which to construct conspiratorial conclusions. Again, on the opposite end are articles, outlets, and publications condemning these assumptions as false or manufactured. And the ultimate conclusion is that we truly do not know where the virus originated as of yet. Time for some conspiracy debunking. One of the rapidly shared social media posts revolved around the famous series Resident Evil, and since Wuhan has been fully and forcibly quarantined at this time, a subject we will discuss in just a moment here, speculation that this could be a Raccoon City scenario began to grow. Among this speculation was an image of what appeared to be a very similar logo to that of the Umbrella Corporation, the evil weapons company in Resident Evil. The logo was presented as the branding for a biological research facility in Wuhan. Corona is, in fact, an anagram for raccoon, meaning if you rearrange the letters, Corona can actually spell raccoon without losing any characters, and the speculation was that this was somehow a real-world Resident Evil scenario. This is, on multiple levels, not actually true. For starters, the logo refers to a facility in Shanghai, not Wuhan, and after that it can be found that the facility is a skincare clinic, not a biological weapons lab. And lastly, that logo has since been changed. Not to mention the colors are all wrong as well. I am a fan of the Resident Evil series, but I don't want to see it lived out in real life. Not to mention false information like this can have severe consequences. Moving on, Wuhan has in fact been quarantined. This quarantine is eerie and chilling. Videos on social media exist of deserted streets, echoing in empty parks, a city once resembling the likes of New York in total lockdown with silence and fear. Not only is Wuhan quarantined, but the number of cities and subsequent people cut off has drastically risen over the past few days. I do not know the exact number at this time since it is so rapidly evolving, but at the time of research, it was in excess of 50 to 60 million people in several major Chinese cities. On top of all this, a study was issued in India a few days ago detailing that coronavirus had HIV inserts. This was quickly disputed and the methodology of that study called into question. It has since been withdrawn to be reworked and I thought it was important to address that since various rumors circulating and videos on YouTube as well still cite this preprint document as a factual and confirmed scientific study instead of a largely debunked and flawed pre-study release. Now though, we get to the conspiracy content that I personally and very firmly believe is completely true. The official numbers released by China, at least some of the very recent numbers, are that about 20,000 cases are confirmed, with a death toll approaching 500. Here's the problem. This data revolves around confirmation of infection, and the quarantine cities have largely run out of the testing kits required to document the cases. There is a separate protocol within China when compared to the rest of the world for reporting data on these topics. In the United States, we use algorithmic extrapolation to predict patient counts. This is not a pinpoint accurate method, but for the most part, it's a general ballpark that works quite well. China does not do this. China reports specific data based on confirmed cases, and to understand just how skewed their methods are, we need to look back about two years. During previous flu seasons, in 2016 and 2017 respectively, the United States, which has a tiny fraction of the global population when compared to China, which has almost five times the number of citizens, the US reported between 10,000 and 20,000 deaths for each season. China, by comparison, with five times the population, reported 56 deaths. Not 56,000 or 5,600, a flat 56. The next year, they reported 41. These numbers quite literally cannot be accurate. There is no statistical reality where this is possible. It is a total and indisputable lie, showing just how manufactured the data produced by China's Communist Party regime really is. But it goes further. During the past few weeks, China has been preparing massive hospitals to house coronavirus-infected patients. These hospitals are colossal in scale, designed to hold about a thousand patients each and be completed in record time, except the central government propaganda accounts have been lying about them from the start. Images were posted for these hospitals which show a beautiful glass-faced facility, but that facility is actually a modular apartment building already constructed some 600 miles away. The real hospital is effectively repurposed shipping containers with bars on the windows and locks that cannot be opened except from the outside. In tandem with this, there is rampant social media footage of Chinese citizens being taken away to quarantine as they struggle frantically to escape. 
Images and videos posted about these events are being deleted from social media by the Chinese government. Reporters who take pictures and videos in hospitals have their homes broken into. They are arrested or their equipment destroyed. The reports of police quarantining and arresting journalists or those that report on the events are becoming increasingly widespread. And it even goes so far as initial reporters on the virus before public acknowledgement had been issued by the government being arrested and detained for spreading misinformation. Misinformation that was actually the truth. This is not the first time we have historically seen a central communist party conduct such activity. In fact, this is practically normal in China, and has been for many years, but a much better comparison would be the Soviet Union in the aftermath of Chernobyl. When Chernobyl exploded, the Soviet Union began lying. They lied about what had happened, they lied about the radiation numbers, they lied about the effects, the list goes on and on. The prime directive was to control the flow of information so that only the party-approved narrative was available, but this failed to be sustainable as the world began to detect the actual radiation spikes and understand the severity of the issue for themselves. Similarly, China is underreporting the actual number of cases on purpose because they are deliberately refusing to actually test patients while the medical system is simultaneously completely overloaded. There are unconfirmed, and I need to stress that, unconfirmed reports of seven cremation facilities in Wuhan running 24 hours per day at capacity, which would drastically raise the actual unreported death count if true. There is also an official declaration by the Chinese government that bodies may not be transferred and funerals may not be allowed. This is to avoid the further spread of illness as individuals congregate to mourn. At this point, I'd like to draw similarities within a Hollywood film called Contagion and use it as a jumping off point to discuss the realism behind conspiracy paranoia and the harm it can actually cause. Contagion is an excellent film, by the way, if you like Matt Damon even better. It revolves around a highly contagious, highly lethal virus that crosses from bats to pigs to humans and sweeps across the globe. The film is obviously a work of fiction, but certain medical terminology and lockdown procedures they chose to show are highly accurate. For instance, in the film, funerals are prohibited and bodies must be cremated or disposed of through alternative means. The virus shown in Contagion, however, is much more lethal. This leads to a significant number of the population dying, ultimately meaning a significant breakdown in society's structure. The same is unlikely to happen here with coronavirus, unless a serious mutation takes place. A large difference is that the coronavirus has a current estimated lethality rate, based on highly unreliable information out of China, keep that in mind, of around 2%, which is higher than seasonal flu, but significantly lower than SARS or MERS, which are relatives of the virus. However, with a lower mortality rate, there is also a higher transmission rate due to an increased incubation period where the patient is infecting others but may themselves be completely void of symptoms. To boil it down to the most basic analysis, the virus is low in lethality but high in transmission, meaning more cases can occur at a faster rate, but as more data pours in, the lethality will continue to decline, I believe. The reason for this is that many patients who contract the virus merely stay at home as if they have the flu or a cold. These patients are not in the medical system, even though the medical system is largely overloaded in Chinese quarantine cities and they are also underreporting data. But still, as cases conclude, the real numbers are obtained. The number of deaths versus the number of cases will continue to stratify, and in the end, the estimated lethality of the virus over time is very likely to decline. So why the comparison? Well, honestly, it's really simple. In Contagion, there is a writer named Alan. He's actually a blogger, I guess, whatever, a journalist, that's what he calls himself, who uses the outbreak to spread homeopathic remedies and lie for profit. By the end of the film, he has some 12, I think, million unique viewers and uses that reach to proclaim forsythia as an alternative to the government vaccine. He engages in securities fraud, lies about having the virus himself to prove that Forsythia works or something like that, a number of different crimes, and his malicious approach to fear-mongering is essentially a blueprint for what YouTube or Twitter or Facebook are trying to prevent. Facebook, as an example, even now with the coronavirus, has vowed to step up their anti-fake news initiative and take down false treatments or other maliciously designed posts that promote information known to be untrue regarding the outbreak. This is one of the reasons topical coverage of the coronavirus has to be carefully considered. Conspiracy theories in the context of gaming are fun, at least to me, for gaming they are. The Anthem conspiracy about a rogue AI determining loot, that was fun to report on, but something like the coronavirus, it has a whole new level of global severity. Now, when I say global severity, I'm not really discussing a medical concern, number one, because I'm not qualified, but number two, I'm much more interested in the financial or economic concerns. As if, for instance, Hyundai has shut down its manufacturing plants in South Korea because parts manufactured in China are no longer available while factories are deserted. 
China is a global manufacturing hub for almost anything you can imagine. Pretty much everybody already knows this. And having massive cities and tens of millions of people quarantined, while daily operations for hundreds of millions more are disrupted, not to mention travel to and from the country is grinding to a complete halt, and their exporting industries are on pause, that has massive global ramifications. This is all considering the virus is contained to just China as well. With hundreds of cases abroad and the virus present in over 25 countries already, the number of nations experiencing this level of isolation could rapidly increase. As an example, in Macau, the largest individual casino industry in the world, the casinos are shutting down for a minimum of two weeks. That is a huge loss in revenue, a reduction in international travel, which affects oil prices, not to mention grounding flights in and out of China by most major airline companies. That has already happened. China itself has seen one of the single largest daily market drops in history recently, owing to the fact that its primary demographic are retail investors, which means common individual investors who are often spurred to investment decisions by fear and panic. This all comes as the trade war between China and the US was set to de-escalate, but the impending trade boom has been entirely halted by the spread of NCOV, which puts a dampening effect down on the entire global economy. How about this? Imagine a lengthy reduction in tourist travel for almost a quarter of the world's population. The issue is not minor. I'm not an economic guru, but the purpose of this video is to spur caution as the truth about coronavirus continues to develop. The idea of avoiding panic is a good one. Spread truth, not lies. But the idea of avoiding panic is also often utilized even when there is something to panic about. So it's usually best to be as alert as possible. On January 18th, well and truly after the virus had been discovered, the Chinese government held a 100,000 person banquet in Wuhan where everyone ate from the same table, almost directly next to the market where the virus may have originated, or if not originated, been spread to within the first 20 patients. This was all state propaganda to convince the Chinese people and the world that nothing was wrong. Days later, tens of millions were quarantined because something was and is wrong. If the official numbers out of China are to be believed, it is highly probable that the existing medical infrastructure could already handle the patient load. Why then are they rushing to construct near prison-like hospitals to house thousands more patients? If everything is under control, why is that happening? Without devolving to speculation of individual social media postings here, the general atmosphere is one of concern and lack of knowledge, while the state propaganda claims total transparency in the face of overwhelming inconsistency. The basic format for testing and documenting is fundamentally broken, as per leaked doctor conversations and secret recordings, which must be taken with reasonable skepticism here since verification is quite difficult. The policy is such that patients who die before receiving treatment are discounted from the official body count. The official test to determine if the virus is present must be conducted before a case confirmed, so the nucleic acid tests, which are only available to hospitalized patients, not those waiting in the massive lines and overcrowded waiting rooms, are not just limited, they are the only source of officially increasing the globally available data count of infected people. Effectively, if you can't get in and get tested and then confirmed, the case cannot be counted. But there are too many people to let into the clinics and not enough tests for the people that they even can let in. So despite the fact that medical staff know that there are tens of thousands more cases, they are not allowed to acknowledge them and must say suspected case. All in all, we are seeing a multifaceted viral outbreak here, one that has trade and economic implications, health implications, is subject to rampant conspiracy theories and authoritarian lies all at the same time. In keeping with the pattern of cyclical outbreaks once per century, coronavirus could very well extend that repetition. Accurate information is important, but so too is caution if that proposed accurate information is clearly wrong from practically every angle. That's it for today. I know the background footage of Pandemic might seem a bit insensitive, but it's a gaming channel after all, so how else would I really tie it back in? If you want support, there are links down below, as well as all of the research links and material I referenced in construction of this video, as well as a whole bunch more that didn't make it into the script. I only just returned from Costa Rica on vacation, but now I'm settled and the content will officially resume. I'm back in the swing of things. Next topic, I believe, is the Warcraft 3 situation, which is a disaster and a half. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night. Oh, and if this video gets struck down from the entire internet, it might have been the Chinese government. Just saying.